Stoicism has solidified its place as one of the most influential philosophies of our time. You got big name celebrities talking about it. You got websites popularizing it and profiting off it. And you got a bunch of new literature that brings this Hellenistic philosophy into the 21st century. Now like other philosophies, there are many different parts, but it's pretty clear that the ethics of Stoicism has really ignited people's interest in it, rather than their epistemology or metaphysics. People want to know how to act, how to live, but although it's ideal to actually read the full Stoic literature that's out there, we also gotta recognize that lives differ, and some people are busier than others. With this in mind, I wanted to challenge myself to only use one passage from the entire Stoic library to provide either enough insight to immediately apply to someone's life, or to inspire someone to read further and build off this foundation. And yeah, this might be a bad idea, but I trust enough in Stoic literature to know that even small passages can inspire some dope discussion. I mean, it was either make a video on an excerpt from Stoicism, or make a video on an excerpt from Tiger Beat magazine. So the text I'm going to be using is Epictetus' Enchiridion, also known as the Handbook. And you know, it's such a short but essential work in Stoic philosophy that you guys should really just read this thing in a night or something. And guess what? The magic passage we're going to be using is literally section 1. To me it's the foundation, the bedrock on which you could build upon. So enough screwing around and let's actually take a look at this thing. There are things which are within our control and there are things which are beyond our power. Within our power are opinion, aim, desire, aversion, and in one word, whatever affairs are our own. Beyond our power are body, property, reputation, office, and in one word, whatever are not properly our own affairs. So this translation by Thomas Wentworth Higginson uses the word power, but another popular word is control. Epictetus is asking us to re-examine what we really have control over in life. And if you think about it, we usually think that we have control over quite a lot actually. It's only when we're making excuses for ourselves that we pull out the it wasn't my fault card. Like when you're late for work due to traffic or something. So in a general sense, Epictetus wants us to consider things that are internal to us to be in our control. Whereas things that are more external are out of our control. Things in our control are our opinion, aim, desire, and aversion. Note that these things directly relate to us as an individual. What may be a hurdle for some people is the idea that our emotions are in our control. Like if someone walks into my apartment and urinates on my rug, I'm gonna get pissed and steal another rug from a millionaire after going bowling. How can I not get angry and have a desire to get some retribution? This question has always been a big thing for Stoicism, but I think it's best dealt with by at least going along with an illusion of control, accepting the Stoic idea first, and then seeing the results. This may be anecdotal, but I've done this before and found it effective. I once accidentally slammed a door on my hand, and it stung, man. But after the initial shock, and once I got some ice on it, I could have been all mad about the whole thing and just had a bad mood. But instead, I remembered the stoic idea and tried to look at the situation in a more comical fashion. I mean, I had a date later that night, and I was also playing Dark Souls, and a hurt hand is going to interfere with both those things. It was kind of hilarious in a weird Shakespearean way how now, out of all times, I hurt my hand. So practically, it worked for me. It may be a problem to accept a conclusion first and then look for examples if you are more scientific in your thinking. But practically speaking, I'd argue that it improved my life to take that stoic leap. Now let's look into things outside our control. Epictetus uses the example of our bodies, property, reputation, and public office. But keep in mind that except for our bodies, this is more focused on the external, something not within us. And as for our bodies, I mean yeah, we could work out and stuff, but we can't control whether or not someone mistakes us for someone who slept with their partner and they beat the living daylights out of us. We can't control bad drivers who get into accidents injuring ourselves. Those aren't exactly our actions, are they? And this influences our emotions with regards to what's in our control. After all, it sounds a bit weird to have a negative emotional response to something we have no control over, and yet we do it all the time. Politics is a big one, for example, and there are certain interpretations of Stoicism that could incorporate the political life. Just look at the occupations of some of the Stoics and perhaps some writings on virtue. But I think this quote throws doubt on that interpretation by acknowledging that things outside of ourselves are out of our control. But sports might be a friendlier example. I mean, you can't control whether your team wins or not, and yet we get emotional and sometimes angry about it. Now, I have a couple questions for consideration here, just something to think about. Firstly, should we be open to ambiguity and look at what we control on a spectrum rather than hard set categories? For instance, we have control over our aversions and desires according to Epictetus. But what about those of us with mental illnesses such as depression or anxiety? 
Does that limit our control? Similarly, when we think of external things out of our control, those differ as well. Grand political change is less in our control than our ability to do good on an individual level, like buying someone a meal or donating to charity. Share your thoughts below on the matter. Now before we end this video, I just want to thank you guys for supporting the channel, it means a lot to me. Feel free to subscribe, like, and hit the bell to stay updated for more videos. With that being said, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.